In this video, I'm gonna go through four basic animation exercises that you can do in Adobe Animate. All of them are essentially gonna be a bouncing ball animation, but for one, we're gonna do it using a classic tween, another one, we're gonna use a motion tween, the third one, we're gonna use a shape tween, and then for the last one, we're gonna do frame by frame animation. Now, even though we are gonna focus on those four simple animation exercises, I'm gonna go through this layout really quick. So over here is your toolbar, and you have your uh, selection tool, a transform tool, you have like brushes over here, shapes, text tool, eraser, your fill, all that kind of stuff is over here. On this side is the properties of those tools. So if I switch to like the paintbrush, let's say, it'll, that's how you can adjust your color and size and all that stuff of these tools when you select them. And the only other thing we need to know right now is that this is your timeline down here, that these are each a frame, so frame by frame by frame by frame. And there's some tools that kind of go with it right up here. And this is obviously your canvas. So I personally like to either click on fit to window or if it's still too big, like if, it's, if I see too much white, I, I like to see kind of edges like this. If I don't see that, then I'll just go a little bit smaller than this. So I'll go like 50% so I can see kind of all the way around like this. I don't know why, I just like to see all the way around. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is down here in layers, we are gonna make five layers. So I have this square with the plus because I'm in 2020 for animate. If yours is 2019, you probably got a, like a piece of paper thing here with like a folded corner. Just click that four times to make five layers. Now we're only doing four animations, but we're gonna use this last one here as kind of our background. So let's double click on the bottom one and call it background and click off. And for the background, all we're gonna do is go up to our selection tool up here and then we're gonna go over to where it says stage, which I called canvas, but stage. You click on that and you're gonna pick whatever color you want for your background. So if you're going like for an outdoor thing, you might wanna put like some sort of blue for the sky. Uh, it doesn't really matter, just pick whatever color. And then we're gonna click on this right here. So right now this is a blank keyframe. So it's this, this little rectangle thing with the little circle, it's an open circle. So we're gonna click on that one, that's a blank keyframe. And we're gonna go over to our rectangle over here and pick a different color. So I'm gonna just keep it with the outdoor theme. I'm gonna pick something that looks like grass and I'm gonna make a box around like this. Now I would say just make sure over here when you've picked the color, if you have some sort of outline, so I'm gonna go back, control Z. If you click on stroke here, if you have some sort of outline, just make sure you click no stroke, like this red line through the box there. And then make sure your color up here is whatever you want for the grass or the, the kind of like the horizon line here. So I'm gonna put some grass back in like this, kind of about, you know, there, like a quarter or like a fifth of the, the whole uh, canvas or stage here. And that's it for background. So now we're gonna do is we're, our total animation is gonna be about three seconds over here. Cause remember we're 30 frames per second. So there's one second at 30 and then two seconds at 60, three seconds at 90. So we're gonna click on the 91 to make sure it's blue like that, right click. And we're gonna insert a keyframe. And that's gonna just make sure that this whole duration of time, so we can move this thing along, that our background stays right there. And I'd say just go over here and let's just lock it. So it's this layer right here, our background layer is locked. All right, so the first animation that we're gonna do, so this layer right here, layer two, double click on that and call this classic. Okay, so that's gonna be our classic tween layer. And to start that one, same thing, click on this empty keyframe right there. And you can see now when we drew on this other one, now it's filled in. And this is an empty keyframe right here. So on this one, we are going to make a ball. So we're gonna to go to the oval tool and we're gonna make this ball bounce over here on the left. So I'm just gonna make a ball up top, actually control Z again. I don't want it to be green. I'm gonna change it here and make it kind of a purple, that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a different color and I'm gonna make my ball. It doesn't matter how big, small, whatever, just make a ball. And because of how classic tween works, we are gonna do this animation by click left clicking right at the end here at 90 and then right clicking and inserting a keyframe similar to what we did for the background. But this time on this keyframe, we're gonna move the ball. So back to our move selection tool up top, you're gonna to take the ball and move it to where you want it to bounce. Okay, so down there. Then we're gonna click in the middle here somewhere, anywhere in the middle, right click and go create classic tween right here, boom. So now when we slide this on this one, you can see it turned purple here. 
So now when we slide this along, this keyframe is saying start the ball there. And then if we slide it along, this keyframe is saying end the ball there. But as you notice for classic tween, it's a very rigid, like consistent movement. So it's start there, go a straight line to right there. So all we're gonna do now is, because we wanna make this ball bounce twice, I think, maybe even three times, or the third time it'll just stop. So click somewhere around 20, right click, and insert another keyframe, and then move the ball down to where it's gonna bounce again, so right there. Then, now when we look, it's gonna actually go quicker, because now we're saying hit the ground earlier. So if we play it, it's gonna go right to there, and it's not gonna move, or it's moving slightly because it didn't line up exactly, but it's, that's, it's gonna stay there for this duration because it's saying be up in the sky here, then hit the ground, mm -hmm. and then stay on the ground. So we're gonna make it bounce again. So I'm gonna go around 40 or so, right click, insert another keyframe, and I'm gonna move, make this bounce back up. Not as high as it was before because the ball is gonna bounce kind of halfway for where, to where it was. And then we're gonna put another keyframe over here, insert keyframe, move this one back to the ground, and then do another keyframe over here, right click, insert keyframe, bring this one back up a little bit lower, and then we already have the last one here. So if we go back to the start and watch this again, it's going, it's gonna bounce, 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 okay? Now, classic tween doesn't look great for a bouncing ball. You wouldn't, you probably wouldn't use that one because once you see the other ones, you'll see why. But now all we're gonna do here is move these keyframes because we don't want them to be even like this. The higher the bounce, it would take longer, right? So to move the keyframes, you're gonna click on the keyframe, hold shift, and we're gonna shift this one down a bit, maybe to like there. This one, we're gonna click on it, hold shift, kind of click it down. So this space in between these ones should be a little bit less. And then I'm gonna click on this one, hold shift, move it down just a little bit. And this one, click on it, hold shift, move it down a little bit. So this first one will take the longest. So if we watch now, it's gonna take a little bit longer, bounce, bounce. Looks a little bit better, but classic tween, again, is not very good for that. And just so you know, we're not dealing with like squash and stretch or anything like that, or dealing with the, the properties of, of speed or time that would make this ball like squish down and bounce, or whatever. We're just practicing classic tween and just moving it as is. So don't worry about that kind of stuff right now. Okay, next one on layer three. This is gonna be a motion tween. So double click on that, call it motion. And we're gonna start it the exact same way that we did classics. So we're gonna click on this empty keyframe right there. And then we're gonna go up to our oval tool here. And we're gonna draw another oval. This time, just make sure it's a different color. So I'm gonna pick like pink and make your oval. Again, the size of the ball, whatever, doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna go right to the very end again. Click on this one at 90, right click. But this time we're just gonna insert frame. Okay, so that's now here and you can see still nothing happens. We didn't move anything yet, it's all there. And the difference this time is we're gonna click on this right in the middle, we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a motion tween this time. And then go to the very, very end and then we're gonna move this ball using the selection tool. So go back to your selection tool. We're gonna move this so it lands on the ground. But as we can see, now we have a path. So all these dots right here, this path, every single dot is representing one of these frames that lies between this dot at the start of our motion tween and this one at the very end. So that's all these dots. And just so you know, if we take the ball and we move it somewhere else, the path is going to change. It's gonna to adjust to match that new spot. So I'm just gonna put it back around here where it was kind of straight down to the ground. And now all we're gonna do, that's still gonna be our ending spot, but now we're gonna go over here and click at the exact same spot. We're gonna click on the frame that's right above this keyframe. So on our motion layer, click right there. And now you can see that this spot, right now it's part way down, right? Because as we move, you can see it's moving along that path until it gets to the end. But we're gonna click right here. We're gonna go right at this spot and now we're gonna move it so it hits the ground. But we're gonna bounce it over here this time. So it's gonna kinda move over to the side. And we're gonna have now a path here, and that, see how these dots are more spread apart? Because it's traveling a long distance, and there's less frames in between. So they're all gonna kinda span a little bit further apart. So that means it's gonna move a little bit quicker. 
And all these ones, it's only traveling this distance between all of these frames, so this is gonna move a little bit slower. So when the dots are closer to each other, it's gonna move slower. When they're further apart, it's gonna move faster. But what's the beauty of a motion tween is if we hover over the path, you can see the arrow with the curve thing underneath it, you can click on the path, left click, and you can drag out the path to change the curvature of how the ball is going to move and hit the ground. And as you can see, if I cram these up, if I go like up like this, you can see that now these dots are closer to each other. And as we move closer to the ground, they start to spread out even more. And that's how gravity would work, right? The ball would move a little bit slower right here and then gradually pick up the pace until it, boom, until it goes and hits the ground a little bit faster. So that's what's cool about motion tween is we can also adjust speed, which is an important part of animation. Okay, so then we're gonna go to our next one right over here. So you're gonna click right above this keyframe and now we're just gonna bounce this back up into the air. So I'm gonna drag the little circle here or, or oval, drag it up to the air and I wanna kinda line it up with this one so it's kind of the, the same height. And now we're gonna select this path right here, not this one, that's our end path. So this one right here, go until that you hover over it with the arrow and the curve and this time we're going to probably curve it like this way because it's going to bounce it's going to come down bounce here really quick and then slow down as it gets up there then we're going to go to the next one over here take the ball and put it on the ground maybe over here and again click on this path curve this one so you got a lot of dots here so it's going to go really slow speed up and then it's going to slow down up here and then speed up again and then this last one here, I'm gonna just create kind of a weird bounce because I wanna end it back over here. So this wouldn't be normal. I'm just gonna put it like back over kind of like there maybe. That's, that'd be a weird bounce. It wouldn't go bounce, bounce, and then bounce back. But I'm just gonna take this path, kind of curve it maybe like that. And then now I'm gonna go to our final path. So this one here, and I'm gonna hover over this one and just kind of do the same thing just to make a, a nice curve here. So now when we watch this one, push play, you can see it bounces and it looks a little more natural, right? Except for that last kind of tweak bounce that I made there. And if we click over just off somewhere else over here, then we can watch it without the path as well. So boom, kind of bounces a lot more natural than the classic tween was for a bouncing ball. All right, next one, layer four. This is going to be, so double click, we're gonna call this one a shape tween. So just call it shape. And once again, we're gonna start by clicking on the blank keyframe, but this time we're gonna start it as a rectangle. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to change the color again. I'm gonna pick maybe some sort of yellow this time and draw the rectangle up here, square, rectangle, whatever, up at the top. Okay, then we're gonna to go to already, we're gonna go right above these keyframes. We're gonna right click and we're gonna insert a blank keyframe this time for a shape tween, blank keyframe, okay? So that nothing's gonna show up. It, the other times when we put a keyframe, you would see the, the rectangle show up again, but now we got a new blank one. So on this one, we're now gonna go back to our oval and we are going to, let's change the color even on this too. So I'm gonna go to maybe a darker blue and I'm gonna, I don't exactly know where it is right here, but I'm gonna just draw the ball down here that's gonna bounce. So if I go back and forth, I can see, oh, I'm way off. So my, my rectangle or square was right there. So I'm gonna take this ball now, go to my selection tool and I'm gonna move it over so it's more kind of underneath where the rectangle is. So kind of just go back and forth until you have a good spot for this. So move it over a little bit there. Okay, then we're gonna click in between here. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go up to shape tween. And now this time you'll see that it does all the work for you right now. It goes from a rectangle, whoop. And then as it goes down here, it changes the color and it changes the shape to the ball, okay? So that's the first one. All you're gonna do is repeat that a few times. So click over here, right click, and we're gonna insert a blank frame. On this blank frame, you're gonna pick a different shape. So I'm gonna go to maybe this one, and I'm gonna draw something that's kinda right here, oh, kinda right there, and I'm gonna move it over. I didn't change the color. You can change the color if you want. Okay, so maybe I can go in here and change to I'll just do a pink as well. And then we go in between here again, right click and create shape tween. And then now you can see it's gonna drop from the rectangle, change to the circle and blue. It's gonna bounce and it's gonna change now to that other shape. And you're just gonna repeat that until you get to the end. So I didn't really line these up well. I'm just trying to do it really quick here. So now when you watch that one, it boom, kind of bounces, bounces, and then bounces. 
maybe this last one, just because everything else looked okay, I'm gonna move this over a bit so that it bounces kind of over, okay? So I'm gonna click away just so we can watch this again. Boom, boom, and boom, okay? That's that one. Last but not least is layer five, and this is gonna be double click and call it frame by frame. And when you hit enter on this one, there's gonna be, there might be a message that comes up that says you know, kind of you named it wrong. Just click okay on that. Okay, so for this one, this one takes a little bit longer. Uh, and again, we're not gonna worry about like squishing and uh, stretching and stuff. We're just gonna move it frame by frame here. So you don't wanna animate every single frame. You wanna go every kind of two frames. So this first one, I'm gonna just get the circle. I'm gonna change the color here. Let's go with red this time. And I'm gonna draw it over here. And then all you're gonna do is you're trying to time it with this right here. So I'm gonna go two frames over and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go insert keyframe. There's no tweening this time. This is just two frames over and you're gonna go to your selection tool and you're gonna move it down just a bit. Remember up at the top, you don't want it to move. You don't want to move it the same the whole way through because that that's what would look like a classic tween. We want it to feel like these ones. So you want to kind of line up with these ones uh, with this one actually, so that it has the same like proper movement, okay? So I'm gonna go, you know, two frames over, right click, insert keyframe, and then move it down a little bit more. Now, to help you out, the best thing to do is go over these little two circles here, onion skin, click on that, and you can decide how many. So I'm just gonna stretch it out to like four. So this is one, two, three, four there. And you can see now that this gives us like where it was before, right? So it tells us the, the previous frame. So now when I go to this one, it's gonna be empty, but if I insert a keyframe, we can now, as I drag this, we can see where the previous one was. So it gives us kind of like, we can slowly make this, the, the space here a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger until we get it moving faster down here. So again, right click, insert keyframe, and we move it down. And I'm gonna try and just keep lining up with this one over here, okay? So then again, two more frames over, insert keyframe, I'm gonna move it down, and as you move it, sometimes it like shows you where the, the other one is, but I'm just gonna kind of move like that, and right click, insert keyframe, move it down to line it up. So that's what I wanna line up with. I wanted that bottom line to show up. So now I know that those are kind of even there. Now, in a normal animation, you wouldn't have this necessarily, so you'd have to just kind of eyeball the gaps right here to make them slowly get bigger. Insert keyframe, make the gap a little bit bigger. Two over, insert keyframe, and move it down even more. And a couple more here, insert keyframe, drag this down. Now the gap here is, you can see how much bigger that is now. And then we're, all, we're really close to hitting the ground here. So this one's gonna be kind of a big one. And then this last one here, right click, insert keyframe, and this is gonna be the one that it actually hits the ground. Okay, so right there, boom, hits the ground. So if we watch that one, I'm gonna just take off onion skin for a second, and we watch it, it's, well, it's gonna disappear there because, that, but you can see that we kept the same kind of motion and movement as this one, because we kind of used it to match up. But in a normal situation, like I said, you wanna kind of eyeball it to just make those increments a little bit bigger as it moves. Okay, so just repeat that the whole way through here and just keep trying to line up with this circle right here as you go every two frames. And that's it. That's four exercises that you can do in Adobe Animate to practice animating in different ways using classic tween, motion tween, shape tween, and frame by frame animation. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.